So overall, how has the year started for you? Great, really good. Um, you know, it's it's been great to finally be able to put this record out, Heaven and Hell, because we've been sitting on it for a while. But you know, it's it's always great, but also kind of nerve wracking putting out a record, um, especially that it's the last record. So yeah. <laughs> you know, the feelings are just kind of strange in a way. Um, I forget that it's a final record because it's a brand new record to us. And then we start doing interviews. I'm like, oh yeah, this is the last one. Um, so I I go back and forth. So it's very mixed feelings that you are having. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, it's it's all good. I feel really good about the decision and I feel good that it's the last record, but it's also like, I have to keep reminding myself that it's the last record because for so many years, we just go on tour and we put out records and then we come home, we make another record. And so it just feels like the same thing right now because we're at the beginning. So even when I'm on stage, I have to remind myself that this is the last show for people because to me, it's the beginning of a tour and I forget. Okay, so it doesn't feel that like emotional playing in those places, knowing that most likely you will be playing in those places like for the last time. I have to remind myself that it's the last time because it's just I'm so hardwired to just go on stage and do what we do. And and I I'm so in the moment of just playing music for the people that are in front of me. And then it gets to the end and and I almost want to say, okay, well, we'll see you next year. And I go, oh, wait, we're not coming back. <laughs> so at what point of time did you make the final decision? Was it like before you even started making Heaven and Hell that now it's the time to put this aside and do something else? No, it was actually the opposite. It was once the record was finished. Um, the whole time that we were making the record, I just thought we were making a record and I was happy about it. I liked the songs. But once it was finished and recorded and I listened to it for the first time, I thought, this is the most complete body of work. This is the record that I think I've been always trying to make our entire career from the from day one. It encapsulates every single bit of some 41 in one record he does. now at the same time i've been having feelings and thoughts about maybe wanting to do something else for probably about five years but every time i had those thoughts about leaving some 41 aside and doing something different i'd always tell myself stop thinking like that like you're in some 41 don't think about anything else and then i would bury those thoughts and i would just move on And then every so often those thoughts would creep back in and then the window just get smaller and smaller. And I was kind of thinking about it almost every day for a while. And then when the record was finished, I go, now's the time. This record is the is the perfect record that just says, if we had to walk away on any record, to me, it's this record. But you didn't know when you wrote it that this is no, the last one. Not at all. That didn't even have that thought whatsoever. But there's also an autobiography coming from you. So how did that happen? Was, was this all like happening at the same time, or 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 how is it also like yeah. now as well? It's so the the idea of an autobiography had been kicking around for a while. I'd been talking to people. I'd been approached a couple of times about writing a story, and I at some points I just thought, yeah, I don't know, I, I'm too busy or not right now. And as we started going down this path, and we knew this was going to be the last record that's when i said you know what let's do it all at once and let's let's kind of sort of end this whole chapter with the whole thing because to me i thought okay if we do this last record and then in five ten years from now i got to write a book and then i got to go revisit all this old stuff it's like i'd rather just do it all at the same time and and move on in my life to the next chapter whatever that may be i still don't know what that is yet But it feels good to just kind of wrap everything all up. This whole Sum 41 thing, my whole life up into this point to just kind of put it all out there but and start that, something completely new. But that isn't about like getting bored of like playing music itself. You don't want to no. get away from music. It's just like that you want to end this chapter called Sum 41. Yeah, yeah. It really is. To be honest, what it is, is I feel like I have, as I get older, I feel like I have more energy as I'm getting older. I feel younger as I get older and I feel more excitement to just like want to do stuff. And I, I feel the predictable gets a little stale and boring and not that I I don't not like some food. I love going out and playing those songs. I love what we've done. And I love being on stage with the guys and I love the fans and the reaction. And it's such a big spectacle. Like, you know, when we go on stage, there's so much energy there and it's so fun, but there is a predictability to it. 
And there yeah, is something that I feel like I just kind of, I don't want to get on autopilot. I want to be creative and think of something. I want to be scared of not knowing what I'm going to do um, and have to try to figure something out. But you never um, sorry to interrupt, but you never be in a band that is sort of like predictable in a way. <laughs> like, no, I like, agree. Like the album is like very diverse also musically. So for me it feels a bit weird that you say so because you have always been kind of doing what you're wanting to do. But do you still feel that some sort some 41 somehow narrows you creatively to a like certain spot? Not totally create creatively, because you are right. I do feel a bit of freedom within some 41 to be able to go and do other stuff we've had a lot of different sounds throughout some 41 and i exactly. feel like sometimes they're accepted and sometimes they're not but the overall feel is like we have this freedom to kind of experiment and even within the band you know because i'm the 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 sole songwriter nobody's ever made me feel like i have to do something or i have to deliver music that the other guys you know everyone's always kind of like excited to to hear what i've been working on so you're right. I do have a freedom there, but there is something about being in a in a band where there's this cyclical thing of like you do a tour, you do an album, you do a tour, you do an album, you do a tour, you do an album. There's like a machine element to it that never stops. And every time I try to stop and go do something a little different, it's like the machine kind of pulls me back in because there's just there's too many people involved that opportunities come along and festivals and all this there's always something there's always tours being offered and i and i feel this guilt of saying no i want to go do my own thing because then i'm leaving people just kind of waiting for me in a way you know so i i feel i always knew that if i was ever going to try to do something different in life the only way to do it is to just cut that chain in a way and just say this has been great and i'm going to go do something else i like the idea of leaving it in this great place and not like there's been many times in our career that we probably could have and maybe should have walked away because there's been some really down moments. There's been some real low points where it felt like, why are we even continuing? But at the same time, like we're, I always like to push through those, those yeah, you points, right? When it gets type of band that you will just push through the wall. Yeah. Let's say. And so I, I like, I've come to realize at this age that I do better when there's something difficult in front of me. Don't do as well when it's easy. So do you miss more like that sort of like old times when you were like a smaller band and nobody wouldn't predict you and you wouldn't have like <laughs> a lot of people hired and that the ball wasn't like that big? I don't miss those times. Like I don't wish to go back to like just being in a van and making yeah. it really simple necessarily. Obviously, I like a certain level of comfort yeah. <laughs> and um, level of life. But I like the idea of challenging things creatively, uh, like thinking of like what's next in life? How do I build something new? Whether that is music or whether it's something else, whether it's just, I don't even know what, you know, it could just be being the best father and husband um, and just like, you know, doing stuff at home that's just totally different that I don't know how to do, <laughs> you know, that I've never done before and, and learning how to do that the best I can do. I don't know what it is. Obviously, I'm a creative person that I'm always going to want to do music no matter what else I'm doing. Um, I can't help it. I mean... I've been writing songs since I, since Heaven and Hell was finished. I've continued writing songs. I have a whole bunch of songs still. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. And I haven't even really listened to them all to even know what kind of style of music they all are. Because the way I write, I just write something really quick. I usually like throw it on my phone. And I have a hundred ideas in here that I have to sort through still, you know. But is there like some specific type of music that you would like to make, which doesn't fit in the realm of Psalm 41? I think the the most obvious thing that doesn't sound like what we've done is like if I lean more to acoustic or on a piano. Okay. Really slow kind of stuff. And I do write a lot of that stuff. And I have always written that kind of stuff. Now and then, some of those songs I will turn into Sum 41 songs. So if you hear some of the slower Sum 41 songs, those usually come from this, this sort of side of me. Okay. But I have stuff that's even... But I usually make it sound a little bit more rocking, you know, for some 41, whereas some of the stuff I have is way more stripped down. I don't know if they'll ever see the light of the day. I don't know. It's possible. But you also but have that's the that's the furthest from some 41. But you also have that heavy side as well. 
I do. And I, I find that the heavy side, like the metal stuff, like I love writing metal riffs and stuff like that, but they've always made it into some 41 songs. I don't know if I would go down just and, and create a new heavy metal band or something like that. Uh, who knows? <laughs> so that's the exciting part is that I don't know anything. And I feel like the day that the Sum 41 tour ends and maybe a couple of weeks after that, I'll wake up and go, holy shit. Like I, I don't have anything. I got to figure something out. That's when I'll know, okay, what do I really want to do? So autobiography is called uh, Walking Disaster, My Life Through Heaven and Hell. So I mm-hmm. wanted to ask you a little bit about that, that what kind of process it was to make an autobiography? It was surprisingly, uh, I want to say quicker and easier, even though it's not easy, but it was not as daunting as I thought it was going to be. Okay. I thought the process was going to be a little bit harder because once I started going, it all just kind of came out. It, the hardest part was just starting. It's okay. like getting that first five pages down. And then once I like, I think once I got to seven pages and I really kind of went over them and over them and I edited them and I got them feeling the way I would like it to read. Like the voice inside my head was on the page. That became, then, then it was easy. Then, then I just had to tell the story. Um, but I think I rewrote the first seven pages a few times and then I got to a point where I read it all the way through and I liked it and I gave it to a few people and everyone said, yeah, I like this. That's when I was like, okay, cool. I got the confidence now that I've got something. Now I can just write the story. When did you actually start writing it? Last August. Okay. So that came not that long ago. Fast. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think the entire story from beginning to end took me about six weeks. And I was writing all day, every day, but then I had to go through it and edit it. And then I had another editor go through it and fix a lot of stuff because I mean, I was writing fast, right? So it's like very messy, uh, a lot of uh, like no commas where they need to be, all that kind of stuff, you know? And sometimes my stories were too long. So she would tell me, maybe we cut this here and there. So that took another four or five weeks, you know, and then we were kind of done sounds very fast process because for some people it takes like a long time to do and was it difficult to sort of narrow it down to a book that's the hardest part is um there's so much stuff that doesn't get to go in because it would be a 700 page book and <laughs> nobody's gonna yep. buy that yep. so nobody wants to read a 700 page book about the singer of 741 not even my mom probably <laughs> What was the reason that you wanted to release it now? Was it just that you want to it to end where the sum ends or or Yeah. Why yeah, not? like I was saying before, it's just like the chapter I'd like this to just end this part of my life and now I I move on. I checked the tour dates and unfortunately there's none in Scandinavia. So will Oh there, really? I didn't even know that. Will there be like additions or the Oh, the, because there's still there's I think we're still working on tour. I mean, well, here's the truth, the way tours work, right? Uh, we don't book the tours. Like we have a booking agent who yeah. places the whole, t- you know, all the logistics of where you're going to go and how you can get there and all the kind of stuff. Right. So I don't know. And I know it's not all finished yet. Okay. So I don't know what is coming next. We haven't been presented with what the, uh, the, the plan is supposed to be. I know a lot of it is out there, but not all of it. So I, I just don't know where where it goes from here. Will those Canadian dates be the last dates? That's that's 100% the that's the last. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's about it from my end. Thanks a lot Derek for taking okay. time to do this with me and 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 all the best for the farewell tour as well as for whatever holds you after the time of Sound 41. Anything you want to Cool, thank you. As a closure to all the fans watching this afterwards. Well, what I would say to the fans is um I was really surprised at the reaction from the fans at the announcement of our breakup. I I figured that some people would be, you know, some people would be bummed out. Some people might say, oh yeah, they've been around for a while. I could see that coming. And I figured some people would say, are these guys even still a band? (laughs) You know? So I wasn't expecting the level of, I didn't know that people cared that much about the band. Uh, And I only found that out after we made the announcement. So really all I can say is like, I'm really touched by the emotion from a lot of people, from a lot of our fans. And um, it's been such a crazy, wild, fun journey. And I'm just glad that there's been so many people that have been a part of it. And I just thank everybody for for sticking with us for this long. 
I must say to the end that when I turned 18 and got my first car, the only album I was ever listening to was your album. So <laughs> one summer, cool. we had only that CD in my car and we were oh, wow. listening to it 24-7. <laughs> so that's, that's awesome. I love that. My childhood. See, these are things like I just don't, I don't think about these things, right? I, I, so when I hear them, it surprises me and, I, and I'm really touched and it means a lot to me. Hey, thanks a lot for taking the time and, and I really hope to catch you in Scandinavia. Hopefully there will be one day because I will for sure be there. Cool. Awesome. I hope there is too, to be honest. Um, so I hope to see you. Hey, thanks a lot, Derek, for the chat. All right. Cool. Thank you so Thanks. much.